Hey, this is Brock Mears, and in this video I want to continue talking about circuit analysis. And what I want to do in this video is specifically compare solving a circuit uh, using two different approaches. One is kind of a verbose, explicit writing of KVL, KCL equations and Ohm's law equations so that we have enough equations to solve for a certain number of unknowns versus applying some of the shortcuts that we've learned about, such as combining resistors in series or parallel, using the voltage divider method and using the current divider method. Okay, so just to review, circuit analysis is where you're given a circuit and you have knowns in it. So you probably know the resistors or the voltage sources, etc. And you're trying to solve for electrical behavior, such as currents and voltages through any component in the circuit. And we have a certain number of known, unknowns, and so we write equations uh, to try to come up with at least as many equations as we do unknowns. And the equations are written, written using three laws, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's current law, and Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's take an example circuit where we we have two loops uh, and three resistors. Okay, so this is a little more complicated than a circuit, any circuit that we've looked at before. And in this situation, we are given the voltage source. So let's say it's a nine volt DC voltage source, maybe a battery. And we also know the resistors. Okay, so R1 is 100 ohms, R2 is 100 ohms, and R3 is 100 ohms. And we're asked to find the currents and the voltages through and across every resistor. So if you look at this, we have uh, R1 is gonna have a voltage across it. I assigned arbitrarily the polarity of voltage one. So I gave it a name, V1, and I said, okay, we'll have this be the plus side and this be the minus side. I arbitrarily assigned V2 where the plus side is this side and the minus is that side. Same thing with R3, the plus side is there, minus side is there. That is okay to arbitrarily assign those. If I happen to guess wrong, and I put the plus side over here and the negative side over here, or if it happened to be, you know, it was the plus over here and the minus was over here, that's okay because what I would do is when I get the solution to this, when I get all my numbers, I would just happen to get a negative voltage. So you can arbitrarily assign the polarities of these, and then depending on whether the result is a positive or a negative, you can go back and decide, oh, I should have had that flipped. Same thing with current. I'm gonna define I1 as the current going through R1 in this direction, I2 going through R2 in this direction, and I3 as the current going through this R3 in this direction. Again, if I get all the values and they're positive, that means I guessed right on the direction of the current. If they're negative, then I guessed wrong, and I just know that the current's flowing in the other way. Okay, so here's what we gotta do. We have three resistors, and they have current and voltage through each of them, so we have six unknowns. <laughs> So we need to write six equations. And so at first, at first, it sounds like, man, this is daunting. I mean, this is gonna take a long time and we'll just see how it goes. So what we need to do is write these six equations and then we're gonna plug them into each other and try to eliminate variables until we finally get to one equation that has just one variable and numbers and then we solve for that and then we start plugging that back into other equations. So let's begin with this. Let's start by writing KCL at node A. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna call this equation one, okay? So I'm gonna call this equation one and this is gonna be KCL at uh, node A. And so KCL is simply the current in is equal to the current out. So I1 comes in, I2 goes out, I3 goes out. So this equation is simply I1 equals I2 plus I3. Very simple but it is an equation, okay? So it does work. <laughs> okay, now let's go down and write <clears throat> a second equation. And let's go ahead and write KVL around loop one, okay? So I defined loop one as going this way, okay, clockwise. And so what I'm gonna do is the sum of the voltage rises equal the sum of the voltage drops. So let's start at this node down here. So I'm gonna come through VS and it's gonna go from minus to plus, so that's a rise. And so I have on one side, I have my rises and I'm gonna actually plug in the, the number nine. So I have a nine volt voltage rise and then I come over here and I have a voltage drop because it goes from plus to minus of V1. So I'm gonna put that over on my drop side and then I keep going and I get a voltage drop across V2. So I have plus V2. So my second equation is nine is equal to V1 plus V2 and that is simply KVL around loop one. Okay, so now let's do equation three. Okay, so I come down here and I'm gonna name this equation three. And let's do KVL around loop two. So I defined it arbitrarily as going clockwise and so we can start at this node. So I'm gonna come up through V2, so it goes from minus to plus, so that is considered a voltage rise. So I'll put that over here on my rise side. 
And then I continue around and I come across V3 and I go from plus to minus, so that's a drop. So I get that's on the drop side. And so that one is my third equation and it's pretty simple. V2 is equal to V3. You could have seen that through inspection just because they're connected that way. It's like they're, they have to be equal because they're this side, this node, and this is connected together in this node. But KVL gives us that. Okay. Now I need three more equations, and the third equations that I'm going to use in the next three are going to be Ohm's Law. Okay, so I'm going to go equation four, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to do Ohm's Law at uh, across R1. So I'm going to simply say V1 is equal to R1, and I'm going to plug in numbers. Okay, well actually, sorry, I1, okay, and I'm going to plug in the resistance. And so I'm actually going to say it's 100 ohms. So that is Ohm's Law at R1, V is equal to IR. Let's do uh, Ohm's law on R2. Okay, so I'm gonna have to slide this up a little bit. So I'm gonna say equation five is gonna be Ohm's law at R2. So that's gonna be simply V2 is equal to I2 times R2, but let's plug in R2 right now. So let's go ahead and plug in its value. And so it is equal to 200. And then we have equation six, Okay, and this is the last one we need. And this one is going to be V3 is equal to I3 multiplied by two, uh, 300 this time. Okay, so V is equal to IR at uh, across R3. Okay, so now here I am. I have my six equations. Okay, and they don't all fit on the screen, but that's all right. I spaced them out because what I want to do is do some manipulations in between them. So here I am. And the question then becomes, what do I do? Right? So this is where it's just algebra, okay? You could plug this into a computer and have it just spit out the answer, but let's just go through the algebraic steps just as a, just as an exercise, okay? So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Ohm's Law expressions and I'm gonna rewrite them in terms of the current. So I'm gonna have like I1 is equal to V1 over 100. And I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that to all three of them because I wanna plug these into this equation right here. And that'll allow me to get this one to start removing current as one of my variables, okay? So let's, let's continue this. So I'm gonna say I2 is equal to V2 over 200, okay? So I divide both sides by 200. And then down here I'm gonna say I3 is equal to V3 over 300. Okay, all right, so now I have three equations in terms of I1, I2, and I3, and I can take them and I'm gonna plug them into this equation at the top, which is I1, or I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So let's bring up the first one. I'm gonna get V1 over 100, okay, and that's equal to V2 over 200, and that's plus V3 over 300. So now I have these in terms of voltages. And I'm gonna, now I'm sitting here going, okay, now I've got these in terms of voltages, and that's good because I have a couple equations right here that also are in terms of voltages, and I have a number, <clears throat> okay? So this is like, I, that number is like the only thing that I have, the, the resistors and that voltage. Okay, now let's rewrite, let's try to eliminate some of these variables. So I gotta get rid of two of these variables and leave these in terms of only one. So. I notice that V1, this is an expression that has V1 and V2, and I notice that this has an expression that is V2 and V3. So I could conceivably focus on V2 as the variable I wanna focus on because I have two expressions in terms of V2, and up here I could get V1 in terms of V2, as an expression of, in terms of V2, and I could replace V3 with something in terms of V2. So let's try that. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna rewrite this expression to be V1 is equal to nine minus V2. So I move V2 over to that side. And the reason I did that is because now I'm gonna plug this guy up into that guy in order to eliminate V1. So then once I do that, V1 will be gone and I'll have an expression only in terms of V2. Same thing down here. I don't have to do much because I already have V2 is equal to V3. I can plug V3 into here and now I have something only in terms of V2. So let's do it. So I'm gonna take this guy right here and I'm gonna plug it in right here. So now I'm gonna have uh, nine minus V2 over 100. And then over here, I'm gonna leave V2 as itself. And that's over 200. And now I'm gonna plug in for V3, this guy. So I'm gonna substitute in V3 into here. And this one's easy because it's just V2 over 300. Now, if I look at this, I, I'm there, right? I have an expression in terms of V2 and only numbers. And that allows me to go ahead and solve for V2. And then I, and I can do it. So let's do it. So first and foremost, 
how are we going to do this? They're all over a denominator, a different denominator. So we could find out some like common denominator uh, that would be fine for all. So I could multiply the left every expression by a certain number, uh, and it would get rid of the denominator. And if I look at this, a common denominator for this would be 600. So I could multiply. Uh, everything on the left by 600 and everything by the right by 600 and what that would do is it would get rid of these things on the bottom okay so let's do that so I'm gonna multiply this by 600 and I'm gonna multiply this by 600 okay didn't do anything just algebra I came up with that because you could multiply these things together right so it's like 100 times 200 times 300 and it comes out to be like 6 billion 6 million or something like that but you don't need all those zeros so then you can kind of reduce the zeros down to here and so now if I look at this what's cool is all right I haven't I've this is perfectly fine all, the only reason I'm doing this is to get rid of these denominators so now I can say 600 multiplied by that and then 600 multiplied by that let's do this one first and foremost 600 over 100 is 6 Okay, so that's really multiplying six times nine minus six times V2. So I can rewrite that as six times nine is 54 minus six times V2 is six times V2. Okay, all right, life is good. And then over here, I have 600, let's multiply it by this term first. So 600 times V2 over 200. 600 over 200 is three. So that's actually three times V2. Okay, and this is just algebra. And then over here, I have 600 times V2 over 300. So 600 divided by 300 is two. And so I have two times V2. So now I'm almost there. So let's go ahead and let's bring this over here. I didn't leave myself enough room. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine this. So let's do it another 40, 54 minus six times V2. Oh boy, six times V2. This is where you gotta make sure your minuses <laughs> and your multiplies are clear. Uh, and so that's equal to, let me add three plus two. So I'm gonna have five V2. And so then now let's add six V2 to both sides to get this as 54 is equal to, so I add six over here, I get 11 V2. And so now I can divide both sides by 11 and I get V2 is equal to, and finally I'm able to get a number. So let's like go back here, let's get old, old buddy out here. So I got boom, boom. And so I'm gonna say 54 divided by 11. And the answer is V2 is equal to 4.91 volts okay and I now have my first number now it took a little bit of time but look at what all this stuff I can do okay so I got v2 is equal to 4.91 volts so now what else can I do oh my goodness look at this so now I can take this and I can plug it in and I can say oh guess what v1 is equal to nothing more than 9 minus v2 so I can basically say uh, 9 minus V2, and that's equal to 4.1 volts. I'm going to round that up to 4.1, and now I already have V1. Oh, and guess what? Guess what else I have? V2 is equal to V3, so now I can just say V3 is equal to 4.91 volts, and lo and behold, I have my first three variables solved very quickly, actually. And now what do I do to find the three currents that I need to know? Well, look at what they are. It's simply I1 is equal to V1 over 100. So I can come into here and I've got V1, which is equal to 4.1. And I divided that by, or I divide it by 100 and I end up with 41 milliamps. And I got my fourth variable. Same thing here, let's come down here. V, or excuse me, I2 is equal to V2, which was, 4.91, so 4. Point, let's see, 4.91 divided by 200, and that's equal to 24. Point, let's call it six milliamps. Okay, there's my fifth variable, and then finally I come down here and I say I3 is equal to V3, which is going to be 4.91 divided by 300 and I end up with 16.3 milliamps. And I did it, okay? So now let's do a quick check of our, for a sanity check. Does the, do these numbers match KVL and KCL? I1 equals I2 plus I3. I1 is 41 milli plus 24.6, 16.3. So that does indeed equal 
you know, 41 ish, right? So there, I dropped a few digits in there, but this it comes out to be 40.9, 41 milliamps. So there, that does work. What about KVL is nine equal to V1 plus V2. That's like, well, here's V1 and here's V2. Absolutely, it did come out to be nine volts. So 4.1 plus 4.9 is nine volts. And then does V2 equal V3? So KVL and KCL hold throughout that. Now I did it. I just solved the entire thing, uh, six variables, six six unknown variables and I wrote six equations and I solved it and it did take me about uh, 13 minutes to do that but we did it so now let's see if we can do this faster by using some of the shorthand expressions that we've come up with such as combining resistors and current and voltage dividers so going back to the original circuit what I really want to do is start taking advantage of combining resistors okay so I'm actually gonna draw redraw the circuit and I'm gonna combine resistors R2 and R3. So if you notice up here, uh, R2 and R3 are in parallel. So I could write an exp or a new circuit that looks like this, okay? And I still have R1 is equal to 100, and I still have nine volts, but now I have this new resistor, which is R2 in parallel with R3, and that is equal to some new equivalent resistance. And I get that from, uh, let's see here, let's do my, let's get old buddy out here. So I need to do the expression like this. I go one over one over 200 oh, plus one over 300. And so what I end up with there is, so one divided by, get your parentheses <laughs> memory out here. So uh, let me clear this up. One divided by parentheses, okay? And then I'm gonna open a parentheses, one divided by 200, close parentheses, plus open parentheses, one divided by 300, close parentheses, close parentheses equals. And the answer is 120 ohms. So this res equivalent resistance right here is 120 ohms. Here's what's so cool about that. This circuit is true. And what I mean by that is that it really is, uh, this current right here, which is I1, uh, it does flow through this equivalent resistance. If I solve this, I can still solve for I1, and it is the I1 in my original circuit. So, th so this allows me to do some really cool stuff. Let's continue the simplification of this. And so let's, go, let's write it again. And now this time, let's combine 100 and 120. So now I have two resistors that are in series. So I can write this expression right here, this new circuit where I have nine volt, and now I'm gonna have one REQ, which is R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3. R3, and that's gonna be simply 100 plus 120 because they're in series, and so I get 220, okay? So this circuit right here, the reason that this is so cool is because what I've done is I've simplified this resistor network into something that only has one resistor and one voltage source, and that allows me to do a single Ohm's law calculation to find this current. This current that I find is indeed I1 because it's what flows out of the source. And so it, it gives me I1 immediately. So look what I can do. I can say V is equal to IR, okay? But in this situation, I have nine is equal to the current I want multiplied by 220. And so this I right here is simply nine divided by 220. So I'll go nine divided by 220. And I end up with, look at 41 milliamps. And what is this I1? Or what is this I? It is absolutely I1 in my original circuit because it's what comes out of the voltage source. So this right here is now my first variable. Look at how quick I got to that. And that is absolutely what I found up here. This is 41 milliamps. Now let's do this. Okay. So now that I know what I1 is, I can come back here and I can do a couple different things. First of all, if I plugged in I1 into here, and I could do Ohm's law and find V1 immediately, okay? So why don't I do that? Let's just go back to here. Well, you can do it anyway. So let's just go back up here, and I'm gonna do V1 is equal to I1 multiplied by 100. And so I can say V1 is equal to, and all I do is simply, I already have it in my calculator, times 100, and boom, and it's 4.1 volts. I now have my second variable, and look at how fast it was, and it's absolutely what I had before. It's like, okay, got two of them. Now let's do something that's really neat. This expression right here is in a series resistor configuration where this voltage right here 
can be found using a voltage divider expression. And think about is is what is the voltage I'm going to get? Well, that voltage is absolutely going to be V2 and also V3 because the way they're connected. But let's just do the voltage divider. I can come over here and let's just call it V let's just call it V for right now. But I come over here and I can say V is equal to the source coming in which is 9 volts multiplied by the resistor that I'm trying to solve for or solve for the voltage across over the sum of the series resistance resistances okay and so i end up with this expression right here so let's solve that and let's see what i get for the voltage across that r2 r3 combination so i'm going to have 120 120 divided by 220 and i get that multiplied by 9 and here's what i get 4.9 volts that is the voltage across R2 in parallel with R3. That is by definition V2 is equal to V3 is equal to 4.9 volts. I have now solved two variables in one shot just using a resistive resist or a voltage divider, and it was exactly the, the right thing. 4.91, 4.91. So now look at what I've got. I've solved for one, two, three, four variables. The only thing remaining is the currents through I2 and I3. And that can be solved through either a either a current divider or Ohm's law. In either expression, it's going to take two equations. So let's just do Ohm's law. So let's do we're now going to unfold this back into its original form and I'm going to simply do Ohm's law for R2 and so that's going to be V2 is equal to I2 times 200 and I know that V2 is equal to 4.9 is equal to I2 and so let's divide both sides by 200 and so what I get is divided by whoops 4.9 divided by 200 and that comes out to be, lo and behold, I2 is equal to 24.5 milliamps. And is that right? I'm kind of getting sloppy here, but it is 24.5, 24.6. Uh, then let's do our final one. So now I'm at I3 is equal to, actually, let's write it out. Let's be official. V3 is equal to I3 multiplied by 300. And so I'll solve for I3, divide both sides by 300. So I'm going to get V3 is, what was V3 again? Where is it? 4.9 divided by 300. And what do I get? So I come back over to Buddy and say 4.9 divided by 300. And I3 is now equal to 16.3 milliamps. And does that match what we got before? Boom, it did. <laughs> okay, so let's just think about that. So I just did everything that I did before, but I did it in like six minutes this time. So it took half the time, but look at what I can do now. So this is really how you do circuit analysis. You can absolutely write KVL and KCL and get these explicit ex equations. And that's actually what computers do. If you do a simulation, that's what they'll do. They'll write all the equations that you, they, they can possibly write and just solve these simultaneous equations. But when you do circuit analysis by hand, you almost always are looking for ways to simplify the circuit to make it easier to and to analyze. And the simplifications that we have are simply combining resistors and using Ohm's law, and then also using uh, current dividers and voltage dividers. Okay, so that's it. So that is uh, just a comparison of writing kind of standard KVL KCL versus the shortcuts or the shorthand circuit analysis techniques that we have learned. All right, see ya.